name is Adrian Nanchev and this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification right next to it for the latest uploads. Now, how do I get rich? How do the rich get richer? Interesting little concept really. The rich focus a lot of their time on what's called income producing activities. They have things like stocks and shares or property. They grow and compound their assets in the portfolio when they're in a state. They live the same life 24 hours in a day, hunger, food, things like that. But they live it by different rules. They played the same game of life by different rules and they realize it's about mindset, it's about what you do, what you focus on and what you strive, what you build and what you work on. Someone, two people can be the same age in the same school, same gender, same everything, but one person can go out there and start a business and that business could end up changing his life. It's like a train track. There's a little, there's a little switch that switches direction. It's as simple as that, that little pinpoint, that moment of our just change of strategy. And that over time, that over, over time, that difference becomes massively disparaged. And it's it's all in here, really. It's all in here. If you want to become rich, you just do it. You actively do it and strive and build and you buy. You you don't you don't just grind it out nine to five because it's not your job's boss to make you rich. It's your own job. You want, to, for example, you want to invest ten to fifty percent your income into an income-producing activity: stocks for dividends, property for rental, crowdfunding for the uh, loan loan interest, things like that. And this is how the rich get richer because they have a different focus and they have their attention on different things. They don't think about nine to five working, they think about their own assets, they think about their own estate which is paying them money and they may work for their company but they know that they're not, they're paying, well, a little different. This is, get, this is where it gets it, here is where it gets a bit weird because they don't work for money. They work for the mission or the purpose or the reason, something bigger than themselves, and they mono, mono, monetize it in different ways. Stock ownership, property income, things like that. One of my mentors, a big property portfolio, and it's like he's working 13 hours a day, but he loves the job, he loves the business, it's his business for the past, what, well, since it's existed, like 30, nearly 30 years now, and it's like he gets the money from, from, from the company itself. And, he, and he's working for something that he loves and he's, something he cares about. And as a side note, you can do whatever you want in life. You can start a business selling fertilizer. You can you have a business selling microchips, for example, or carpet. As long as you're happy and competent to do so, then it don't matter what you're doing or what you're or what you're selling or creating. So the rich play life by a different game, by a different set of rules, and they realise that. Doing a nine to five is not going to get you rich. There's more to it than that, and they they stay rich because they understand how the markets work. They understand the uh, the booms and busts. They ride the boom and they know when to leave just before the bust. So then they ride the next boom. Then they leave just before the bust. So then they ride the next boom. It's as simple as that. If you've ridden the real estate market, then then they say the crypto market, or certainly the real estate and commodities market, and then crypto and maybe what else is around here. I can't think of anything off the top of my head. But stocks, generally in America, or the Dow Jones, for example, you would have ridden that market. You'd have known when to leave because you know more stuff. They focus on different things. They, also, they're always learning, always learning, always learning. I have got books here on capitalism and then economics to read for investing which I'm going to be doing very soon and it's like people that's, people who finish university or school or whatever they, they stop learning so they're here forever but the same people it's the turtle they keep going and keep going and keep going for, for the rest of their life and it's that train track analogy again where just by I'm learning more stuff and 10 years down the line 30 years down the line the difference is massive I remember years ago I started learning about economics in my free time and, I, and someone said to me, oh, why are you doing that? Waste of time. You didn't study that at university. You didn't, you, you didn't do a master's in economics. Why are you doing that? You're wasting your time. And it's like, well, now that, that, that knowledge means a lot of stuff, a lot of um, a big difference in life. So the more you learn, the more you earn. And um, they, they just keep learning. They're lifelong learning machines. Never stop learning because the more you learn, the more you earn. Very important to understand that. And there's a mindset as well where they understand how the world works and, and, and they're adjusting to it. They're adjusting to how it works and what they prioritise, what they plan. Um, 
So those are some of the ways. Those are some of the ways. So the question of the day to you is, the question of the day is, how are you getting rich? How are you getting rich? I, because I have realised, uh, when you look at the Forbes 400, this is how I'm getting rich. When you look at the Forbes 400, we see that about 70 of them are investors. Not, not techies, not real estate people, investors. So they put their money into the markets and they have their money working for them. Which, by the way, is a different paradigm shift from, from, from normal people who are on, this, on the same line, who have not moved from this people who keep going. They have money work for them. They don't work for money, but they have money work for them. They deploy the capital, like energy, into the world. So these investors have their money working for them, or certainly at the very least, they're, they're investors, they're clients' money, and they have millions and billions under management, and they have it working for them in the markets. So what I'm planning on is in, in dividends, looking at stocks and shares and companies and, and buying them for the dividends, which is that return, that monthly return, the quarterly return, that every six months, the yearly return, like a reverse membership fee. I own equity and a stake in this company and the company pays me an income purely for ownership. Um, that's just the way it works. I'm not quite sure why they do why dividends exist. I think it's like a couple of hundred years ago the shareholders wanted more and they just agreed to do dividends and you know that's that's been the norm for hundreds of years, I think. Some of like futures and option contracts decades and centuries ago. Um, so that grow and compound that. Because my principle with regards to investors is that the way this world works now with regards to the markets, with regards to the economic system, is that if you own a share of the company your leverage, the keyword there is leveraging, you're leveraging the entire performance of everything. The sales team, the management, the advertising, the logistics, the infrastructure, everything. And if each one of those performs 1% better, that compounds and it ricochets into a higher stock price. And then you can you know, buy or sell or whatever. or that And that transpires also into a more reliable dividend or a dividend growth, for example. So by owning equity... You're more, you're more, pro, you're more profitable because you're leveraging the entire systems. Like I calculated off top, of my, off top of my head that if you owed something like one percent of Coca-Cola in dividends, you would receive something like four or six or eight or ten million pounds a year in dividends from one percent of Coca-Cola. That's just equity. That that's that's essentially interest in the bank, but it's much but a little different rules, certainly on taxes. So that's the way I see it. And my principle is in business and in life is do the work once and get paid forever because you don't want to do the work once uh, keep doing the work and getting paid again and again that that's trading time for money nothing wrong with that but it's not a very not a very scalable strategy and also i want access to ownership so i want to be able to access the infrastructure the company or everything around it without being liable or without being responsible for the utilities the logistics the supply chain the wages Things like that. I don't want to be responsible. Or if there's a downturn, or there's a massive mistake in the company. I, I don't want to be held on the line accountable, like, like Pepsi did with that advert they made a few months ago in April 2017 with the uh, the Pepsi and the, the the riot thing. I don't want I don't want to be held, I don't want to be responsible for that. But I don't want the dividends. I don't want the income. So keep going, Pepsi, but give me the dividends. Cool. And similarly, new new phrase I've coined recently is uh, buy and compound. Don't fuck around. See, another thing that um, the rich leverage insanely is compound interest or, or compounding, which is you have your money invested and it gives you a return and then you, re you invest that as well and you, that return it gets higher and higher and you constantly compound it. You're, con you're growing, it's called hockey curve, it's, the, uh, it's exponential growth. It's, okay, here's a little, here's a little, um, here's a little thought experiment to, ex to explain compounding. Mm. Take a chessboard and on each check on each chess square double the amount of rice grains you put onto it so start on, on day one put one grain of rice on day two two grains of rice day three you put four grains of rice day f uh, four five eight grains of rice eight sixteen thirty two and so on and so forth and by the end of it when you got for all sixty four squares on the chessboard i believe it's sixty four um you, yeah, eight by eight. You will have to give more grains of rice than have ever existed, or like more grains of rice than there are stars in the universe, kind of thing. That's exponential. That's compounding. That's exponential, surely. But compounding is very similar to that, where uh, it, it just grows com exponentially. Yeah, it grows exponentially. Yeah, it, it's just a hockey curve where it's just slow and steady, 
then suddenly it just starts to grow and it just spikes through the roof. It goes vertical. It goes, I think the phrase is hyperbolic or um, hyperbolic. It just goes through the roof. So that, a lot of people don't understand that concept and that's something I highly recommend you look, look into as well, compounding, because a lot of people will leverage that and they would have leveraged that for decades and decades. Um, that's very powerful. There's a few other things as well, but for another time, like no money down. That's, that's, for, that's, for, that's for another time. But anyway, question of the day to you is, how are you becoming rich? I've just given you my answer on my explanation. So please, please tell me, comment below, how are you getting rich? Very curious. Let's talk. In the meantime, however, I remember that this channel is all about helping you become a remarkable entrepreneur. So click on the subscribe button below and press the bell notification right next to it for the latest uploads. How cool is that?